Well, today's other really big story, the fallout from Justice Anthony Kennedy's surprise retirement. It gives President Donald Trump a chance to fill another seat on the Supreme Court. This morning, bets are being placed on who the White House will nominate to fill the vacant seat. Let's talk about that with Fred Lawrence, a distinguished lecturer at Georgetown Law. He is also CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Thank you so much for uh, coming in. It must be an exciting time for this you. This is all anybody in my line of work is talking <laughs> about right now. So let's talk about that. The president has this chance to definitely put a conservative stamp on uh, the high court. Uh, how easy will this process be or not easy will this process be? It depends what you mean by easy. The president's got the votes in the Senate right now mm -hmm. pretty much to do whatever he wants to do. The question is, should we use this as a moment to do that, to move the court in a particular direction, or do we use it as a moment to unify and reach out more broadly. Presidents have done both, and if one had to guess, one would guess this is a president who's going to that list that he's already put together, and okay. that will tilt the court much further to the right. All righty, and, and let's talk about what, but before we see the, the people who he might uh, sure. put forth, what would that mean for these United States? What sort of country and, and system of laws might we have if the uh, president does get a conservative on the well, court? Justice Kennedy has been the swing vote of this court for a long time. He's been on the court for 30 years. And in 20 of those 30 years, he was the one who was most often in a 5-4 vote with the majority. So that shows you right at the center where he was. So what happens if that center now moves to the right? Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, becomes in the center on issues like voting rights, on issues like abortion rights, on issues like affirmative action, and especially issues like gay marriage, which really was the key issue identified with Justice Kennedy. All those questions are now much mm. more up in the air, and the one everybody's talking about is does Roe against Wade survive? Right, the abortion rule. Okay, let's talk about some of the front runners now. Let's start with uh, sure. Brett Kavanaugh. Give us the pros and the cons. Well, Brett Kavanaugh is, let me, let me start by saying all the names I'm going to give you are very bright people. There's mm -hmm. no question and about And all this. very conservative. All very okay. conservative. They okay. come off of a list that was actually put together by the Heritage Foundation in collaboration with the Federal Society. These are two major conservative groups. Mm -hmm. Brett Kavanaugh is here in D.C. Yes. on the D.C. circuit. Uh, prior to this time, he famously served on uh, Ken Starr's team. He was one of the investigators on the uh, Whitewater probe. Uh, very uh, connected with the Bush administration, worked with President Bush, uh, George W. Bush, uh, and then was put on the D.C. circuit uh, by President Bush in 2006. Okay. Um, Thomas Ka Hardiman. Thomas Hardiman is an interesting story. Thomas Hardiman has got a story that might appeal to the president. Mm -hmm. I drove a cab in Waltham, Massachusetts, which is where Brandeis University is, where I was the president mm -hmm. for a number of years. So I got a particular soft spot for somebody who hacked a cab in Waltham. Right. Uh, Thomas Hardiman is on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. That's in uh, Pennsylvania, is where he's based. And some people will remember he was one of the finalists last time with Justice Gorsuch. You remember a story that there was another man who was driving to Washington and some of the mm -hmm. press was following him? That, that, was was Justice, that was Judge Hardiman. Okay. Sort also, of, very, very conservative, mm -hmm. uh, very bright, thoughtful judge. But a uh, pull yourself up by the bootstraps kind but of But a person. story of pulling yourself up. Exactly okay. right. Um, Amul Fapar, she would be the first Indian American. That's right. He would be the first. Oh, uh, he, pardon he, me. That's right. He would be the mm -hmm. first uh, Indian American on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, something of a protege of Mitch McConnell. He was U.S. attorney in Kentucky and then a federal judge in Kentucky and then President Trump elevated him up to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. So we know he's on President Trump's short, short list, mm -hmm. and he would add diversity to the court. And Amy Barrett. Now, Amy Barrett, uh, Amy Barrett is the youngest of the four, I'm suggesting. Mm -hmm. And I mention that because last night you might have heard the president say he's looking for somebody for 40 years, right. 45 years. Right. Um, she could possibly be on the court in 40 or 45 years. Mm -hmm. uh, law professor at Notre Dame. She clerked for Justice Scalia. And in her uh, time as a professor, known as a very conservative uh, scholar, very conservative theorist, and some people will remember her from her confirmation hearings for the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago, where she sits now. She was the one who was examined by Senator Feinstein from California, mm -hmm. who asked whether she might be too Catholic and her views might keep her from being on the court. Right. A lot of people were very concerned about that. She was confirmed by the Senate and now sits on the Seventh Circuit. Fred, what's the timeline here? What can we expect to see? Oh, I, I would expect this to happen relatively quickly. Right. I would expect that the president makes a nomination within the next month and maybe even weeks. Mm -hmm. And I think the Senate Majority Leader expects to schedule this. I think there's a good chance that you have a confirmed ninth justice by the first Monday in October, which is when the next Supreme Court term begins. That's amazing. Well, it is amazing, and in some ways, maybe too amazing, maybe, right. maybe too fast. Mm. You know, one thing that the president could do, if he wanted to do something out of the box, and this is a president who sometimes goes mm -hmm. out of the Very box. Very out of the box. What he could say is, this is the time for a conservative pick, 
But I want somebody who, like Justice Kennedy, was a unifying theme. Mm -hmm. So I got to pick out of the box for him. It's not on his list. That would be Senator Murkowski from okay. Alaska. She's well regarded, very bright, and I think people on the left and right would both sort of have one of those head snap back mm -hmm. moments and mm -hmm. say, huh. And that would actually be a chance to do something that, well, when Anthony Kennedy was confirmed 30 years ago, the vote was 97 to 0. Mm. It would be interesting to have a Supreme Court pick who was unanimously endorsed by the United States Senate. Interesting pick. Okay, well, you'll have to come back on. I will look that, forward uh, to it. If that rings true. Thank you. Okay, Fred Lawrence, thank you so much. Georgetown Law, also CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society.